An excerpt from the article, The Towers and the Church, which I wrote and published some years back for the anniversary of 9-11. My Lord Jesus Christ, King of all, what hast thou come searching for in hell? Or hast thou come to renounce mankind? From the praises in the Orthodox Liturgy of the Hours for Great Holy Saturday. Aside from the seven numbered structures that made up the World Trade Center complex, the towers were one and two. No other New York building was destroyed or fatally damaged in the attacks of September 11th, according to William Langevich's book, American Ground, except for one. That one stood at 155 Cedar Street in Lower Manhattan, directly across from the South Tower. 155 Cedar Street was an anomaly. Built in 1832 as a private residence, later a tavern, this tiny relic of the 19th century endured in a district where modern skyscrapers were common and real estate scarce. It was nestled in what had eventually become a parking lot, its footprint covering a mere 22 feet by 56 feet, and despite its close-set rows of windows, and four low-ceilinged stories. It stood a mere 35 feet high. This was approximately one-fortieth the stature of the 1,362-foot South Tower, in whose shadow it endured, and in whose collapse, at 9.59 a.m., on the morning of September 11th, it was engulfed. No victims were recorded at 155 Cedar Street. An electrician and a caretaker had fled just minutes before the South Tower fell. News stories failed to report on the event until almost a week later. But God chose to be with his people here as well, where the rage of the nations fell upon this rich, free, safe homeland I thought I knew and owned. For 155 Cedar Street was a consecrated church. Was God present at Ground Zero? A question asked more than once, and you can see why. How could an omnipotent and all-good God permit such carnage? Or permit the Sudan, the Balkans, Rwanda, Kurdistan, Chechnya, Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, Ukraine? You name it. For most of the world, the Shoah is the hallmark of all of this, and not without reason. God's chosen people, whom Christians and Muslims, the world's two largest religions, and more than half of the world's population must own as spiritual ancestors if they are to be honest at all, were singled out for annihilation, and most of the Western world, including most Christians, stood by or even took part. And this attempted genocide was singularly effective. For those who fail to realize this, even now, 60 years later, there are less than 15 million Jews in the whole world, over 80% of them in just two countries, Israel and the United States. For the Jewish theologian Richard Rubinstein, as for many others, God died at Auschwitz. How can you argue? It's hard to deny or dispute. For those who believe, indeed, that God has died and is risen, the words ring true, but in an entirely different tone. In Constantine's sword, James Carroll criticized Pope St. John Paul II for Christianizing the Shoah by referring to Auschwitz as the Golgotha of the modern world. To tell the truth, one understands the objection. But what else could the Pope have said? What other name is a Christian to give to a place where God has died? Yes, God was present at Ground Zero. The little church at the foot of the tower saw to that. But what does this presence of Christ mean on this ground? Clearly, the presence of the eternal in the flow of time, perpetual remembrance and occasion for prayer, but also in the orthodox theology of the harrowing of hell. Christ descends into the darkness of the pit that the powers of evil may be confounded, that hell which may not hold the prince of heaven be forced to relinquish its captives. Christ, risen, leads the dead to life. As a troparion of an ancient canon of Great Saturday, 
older even than the praises cited above, reads, Hades reigns over mankind, but not eternally, for thou wast placed in the grave voluntarily, and by thy life-giving hand thou hast broken the keys of death and preached to those asleep from the ages, being the unfailing deliverance and firstborn of the dead. Hades was wounded, receiving into its bosom him who was wounded in the side by a spear, and sighs, being overwhelmed by the divine fire, for our salvation, who sing, Blessed art thou, O God, our deliverer. Let creation be glad, and let all the earth-born rejoice, for the enemy, hell, has been captured. Let the women meet me with myrrh, for I have delivered Adam and Eve, the ancestors of the human race, and on the third day shall rise from the dead. This, then, is the ultimate search and rescue. Hell has visited the earth, but our Deliverer is at the ready, prepared to plumb its depths and face down its torments, which have no power over him, the better to obtain our release. But there is something more. Orthodox theology emphasizes the life-giving action of the Holy Spirit in the confecting of the Eucharist. Indeed, Catholic theology since the Second Vatican Council has taken a cue from the East. The invocation of the power of the Holy Spirit in the Novus Ordo Eucharistic prayers follows on this Eastern liturgical insight. So it is Christ, present by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is that Christ, who is our redemption and our life, who frees us from the bonds of sin and death and hell, and from the mortal darkness that marred the bright morning as summer turned to fall over the city. In this light, take a closer look at the cover image of this sound file. It is a famous image, the work of the great art photojournalist André Kertesz, and an image made all the more famous by its gracing the cover of Don DeLillo's 1997 novel, Underwood. Study this image carefully. In the background, of course, you see the towers. In the foreground, you see the arch and bell of a church. And upward, to the right of the central images, something is flying. It's actually hard to look at. In the aftermath of September 11th, it's wrenching to see anything flying in the vicinity of the towers. But when you do look, what you see there, flying upwards, is a dove. Symbol of the Holy Spirit, shooting skyward toward heaven, where Christ, who is risen from death and hell, has led his own from the pit of human brokenness to life in the glory of the Father, world without end. Amen.